Hello Cherries fans and welcome to Back of the Net. This is The Lowdown with myself, Sam Davis. Me, Tom Jordan. And I'm Tiggs. Tiggs, not so long to go until the Premier League season starts. How are you feeling? Yeah, good man. I'm not, not nervous really. I just want to get there. Just want to get there for that first kick of the ball on the 6th of August. I'm really looking forward to it. Got to just get the season started now. It feels like it's just kind of dragging a little bit. Yeah, yeah I just want to kick it off now, like Tig says. Um, yeah, no expectations really going into the Premier League. Um, and yeah, I'm just intrigued to see what we do and what, what changes are made. And just, But yeah, just like Tig says, just go and watch the football again, mate. Can't wait. So this is the lowdown. So of course you'll remember every time we have a new signing, we'll do a lowdown show. But because our transfer activity has been mm, sparse to say the least, we've put it all together in one show. Plus we're going to analyse the squad we've got, see where we need to be strengthening and see how it will work this season. Because the pre-season friendlies probably indicate, Tiggs, that there may be a few changes with the way we play. Yeah, he's certainly tinkering around, isn't he? And trying something else out. It's, he has said in the press, that he thinks that we're going to have to set up differently this season in order to get anything uh, from it. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see. We've seen uh, a few friendlies. We've seen even the, um, the the youth setup, the younger teams as well, playing a different formation to what they played mm. last season. So there's definite push in a new direction. Yeah. Yeah. No, I reiterate right what Tig says, but I think it's Scott's probably looking at it and going, you know, we're not going to have the ball like we had the ball last season. So we're going to have to adapt a little bit. And I was saying off air that I think. Maybe with the fact that he's obviously been in the Premier League with Fulham, he's going to have learned stuff, uh, and hopefully that's that's a good thing because you know they obviously went down, um, and maybe he's looking at looking at different things. Going the experience I've got there, what did I need to change to have made it work? And that's what he's trying to do. So yeah, it remains to be seen, but at the moment it definitely looks like we'll be changing a few bits and bobs. So if you go to the transfer market website, you can have a list of all the players that have left the club. And look, there are some that are split over the two seasons. So it looks like we haven't actually lost that many personnel. But compared to the end of last season, mm. there are actually quite a few. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do a little something with you now. Right. Okay. Out of 10, mm. how much do you miss our departures? And okay. I'm going to give you a player. 10 being you really miss them. 10 being okay. you really miss them. One being, you're not so fussed that they've gone. Okay. Now, obviously, this would change based on the fact that we might have made some more signings to replace them, in which yeah. case you wouldn't be so bothered. But firstly, Robbie Brady. Um, it's a weird one, really, because I don't think... I mean, he didn't have... Uh, Swansea, that was mm. it, the Swansea game. And did I think he could make the step up? Probably not. But at the moment, recording, he'd probably be quite handy because he's versatile. Five. I'll go right in the middle because I'm not sure. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, you know, he's, he was a, an interesting player for us to sign. I never really played a lot for us, but, you know, not talking too much about next season yet, but going in, looking at what we got so far in that position. Mm. Premier League experience as well. Premier League experience, we yeah. Of, so. Is Zeno Ibsen Rossi gone permanently, which mm. I'm quite surprised. Is it Cambridge? Yes, Cambridge. Cambridge gone yeah. to. Uh, I was quite surprised. I thought, you know, given our position now, with a lack of central defenders, I thought that he might be one that we might send on loan. But no, he showed some promise in the championship as well. He did. He played a bit. He played a big part. You know, when we yeah. were down to the bare bones, so to speak, and before Kale come in, and he never really put a foot wrong. I think people look at that. Was it the Coventry game? We come on a sub and didn't do very well. But all in all, we come out of nowhere and was brilliant. Um, yeah, I was surprised just because I, I didn't think he was a Premier League player yet. But I thought loan deal, and then if we were to go down, he could be quite crucial mm. in the championship. I think, but. Um, yeah, a bit of a weird. I think if it was a loan, I would say like one because I think that's right. Because mm. it's permanent, I'm disappointed. Yeah, I agree. So I'll. But do we need him in the Premier League? Probably not. I'll go. Yeah, four or five yeah. for for Ibsen, I think. But I do like him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean we're talk, we, we, I mean we're just talking about departures and how it means as a departure. As a departure, yeah, I go the same with Tom. You know, as long as you get some more defenders in to take the place of those squad players. Mm. We won't talk about Gav Kilkenny in terms of scoring him. We can recall him, of course. He's gone on loan to Stoke City, but he is a player we've effectively lost for a bit. Uh, Gary Cahill Tiggs was always one that was never really going to be part of our Premier League squad. But now, in hindsight, do, do you think like one more season, or would have that been a bit too much for him? I would have personally. Really? Well, looking at what we're looking at now, going in, we got a week left, haven't we? Mm. We left till the season starts ish. So uh, yeah, I would have kept him on personally. Yeah, it's a really tricky one, isn't it? I, I never thought he would, so it doesn't feel like we've lost him because I always felt he was going to, because of the way the season ended. He was, but I expected to get 
more centre halves in, like you say. So right now, I mean, I'll take any centre half. I'll take mm. Sylvain Distan. <laughs> so yeah, but he hasn't got a club yet, as far as I'm aware. No. So, and I would have thought he'd have offers. So yeah. I'm wondering if there is a phys- I think we saw, didn't we? We don't need to go into it too much. Okay. That when he had a knock and then he so come back, back on it. Yeah, he wasn't quite back. quite right, but. Um, so yeah, I'm probably a little bit lower than the others on that. I'll probably be like a four or something. But I agree with Tiggs right now, and he's centre off, so and Premier League experience again. And of course, we had Nat Phillips on loan, yeah, who who really gelled into the system coming, and he bought and he really bought into the whole philosophy. And I thought that he would probably be here right now as a loan signing or maybe even a permanent. But it sounded like initially Liverpool maybe wanted too much money, yeah, but still doesn't seem to be any sign of him being at Dean Court and I think he's going to be a big miss for us yeah, completely definitely I mean he started to form a really nice partnership with Kelly uh, it started to work really really well especially after you know we were all wondering why Gary Cahill wasn't playing mm. and then uh, you know we managed to replace him and now we've got neither so uh, for me he's, he's, he's a big miss so I, I you know I'd go I'd go to a seven or an eight here mm. I think yeah I'd agree I was gonna say I was gonna say about an eight um, but I'm Hopeful it's not dead yet. He hasn't gone anywhere. There's, for me, I'd be absolutely shocked if he stays a Liverpool player, whether that be he only gets a loan or leaves permanently. I mean, he's never going to get a kick. Um, it's whether there's other clubs going round. It's whether we want permanent or they want permanent or you know one wants yeah. a loan. We don't know. But I'm hopeful that's not dead yet and we could still get him back because I think he, when he come in, Parker trusted him, didn't he? And he even showed little leadership qualities out there as well. Yeah. And I thought he just started to jail, like Tig said, with, with Kelly. So... I'd, I'd definitely not be averse to getting him back. I, I really hope we do. Um, and he's still young as well. And he's got a lot of experience at a young age playing for Liverpool and playing in the Champions League. So right now I'm really missing him. So yeah, about an eight. But I'm quietly confident in some capacity we might get him back. OK. Uh, Leif Davis as well. Hmm. Uh, he, he's he gone back. And then since then he's gone to Ipswich now, hasn't he? Ipswich, that's it. Yeah, League One. And League they, should one. Be, they should be fighting at the top of League One. And that makes perfect sense, Yeah, I think. He could probably do it at championship level, to be fair. I mean, he, he and us weren't to know what Zamora would be like. And that was kind of, you know, detriment to him. But top league one left back, I think he will be. It, I saw Ipswich fans asking Bournemouth fans that on Twitter yeah. and stuff. And everyone was saying the same. So, But do I miss him loads? Probably not. No. Because I think Jay-Z's better. And at the moment, we could do with a, a backup, to be yeah. fair. Mm. But um, no, I think that's a good move for him. And I didn't expect us to keep hold of him, to be honest. So probably a three or four with, mm. with Leaf. But... As we keep saying, at the moment, <laughs> that's only if we get someone in that can compete with Jay-Z. Maybe yeah, similar okay. with Ethan Laird, didn't you? Yeah. Didn't really see him too much, did we? We saw him off camera, yeah. well, on camera, but off the pitch in the dressing room, being uh, quite a shining light amongst the lads. But other than that, on the yeah. pitch, didn't, didn't see too much from him. There was a lot of rumours when we got him that it might be like a two-year mm. loan deal, that we'd, we'd get him again for another season. But he, again, he didn't really push who we had in that position already, mm. a bit like Leaf wasn't able to. So uh, I'd go the same, really, same numbers. Mm. It's just, it looks like a really good player, probably going to have a great career, but not really right for us right now. Right, so. just want a score from you. Just want a score and that's it. Freddie Woodman. Zero. <laughs> Todd Campwell, Tiggs. Uh, three. And then finally, Morgan Rogers, Tom. Minus foot. No, I'm, I don't <laughs> want to be too harsh. Uh, yeah, zero, never happened. So those, those are all players that we've no longer got. We've lost, we've lost a number. How many is that? Eight, nine, maybe even ten? Yeah. yeah. We've replaced them with two slash three incoming. Mm. So let's talk about the players that we've got in for this season. And the first of which was revealed, I think it was on the 22nd of June, Ryan Fredericks. Yeah. Now then, Tom, mm. shall we give the behind-the-scenes view from a certain former Cherry's gaffer on Ryan Fredericks? Because whilst on camera... He was fairly nonplussed. He's he's not convinced. He's convinced that he's got a lot of work to do to fit into Scott's system. Yeah, I think um, Harry kind of said that when he when he had Fredericks, I think it was at Tottenham, wasn't it? That he couldn't work out. He said he, he wasn't really defensively good enough for us to be a fullback, mm. but he definitely wasn't good enough to be a winger. Kind of maybe wing back, which now, as we alluded to, yeah. the system might make more sense. But yeah, he he was surprised that we'd gone with Ryan Fredericks, mm. um, and also his fitness and injury record which we already realise yeah. has come to fruition there but listen I think it's I, I never mind when you, when you get a player that obviously we've got in Ryan Fredericks and I'm not going to pretend I know a great deal about Scott Park has worked with him and played with him so there's a there's got to be a level of trust there and I, I never mind but if a manager gets a player they've worked with before I think well he must there must be something he must yeah. trust him he's not going to bring in a player 
that he knows and thinks he'll let him okay. down. Why would you do that? So, and there was a bit of experience there. He played in the he played in Europe last season when when West Ham needed him. So, it's probably more for squad depth. It feels a little bit reminiscent to the Robbie Brady side and a bit of Premier League experience. Probably won't play week in week out. We'll probably get some injuries, but he could be beneficial to squad to the squad. But remains to be seen. Uh, but we'll probably, if we play the system, utilise that wing back role. And maybe we're also thinking with Smith, he's only got the last year. Mm. You know, if worst comes to worst and we were to go down, we would we, he would maybe stick around for another year, but who knows. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one, really. When you go to the Premier League, you think, OK, we need to improve a squad. Does he, imp- does he improve? Is he an improvement on anybody else that we've got? He's not really. I mean, he played, as you say, he played a couple of years for Parker, didn't he? So he must know, his, yeah. know him really well, know him inside out. But uh, I don't know. Mm. For me, I, you know, the jury's out. I'm sure he... He could be a great squad player, but do we want to be buying squad players or do we want to be buying someone who's actually going to push for a... Yeah. Now, he was seen hobbling away from the Portugal training camp on a, on a separate flight, which came back into Bournemouth Airport on the Sunday. And since then, he's been pictured few and far between, certainly not on the latest training photos, along with someone else as well, which indicates that, you know, that's... That, well, that's certainly a worry as the season approaches. But he's on a two-year deal. Uh, The 29-year-old, he made 77 appearances for the Hammers after signing for them in 2018. And like you say, he was part of a squad that reached the Europa League semi-final. And that, you know, that's that's something to shout about. It was a Craven Cottage where Fredericks enjoyed two seasons playing alongside Scott Parker. And he became the Cherries coach's, head coach's first signing to be followed up, Tiggs, a couple of days later by a guy who we signalled our interest yeah. in mm. previously. It seemed to, to coin a Love Island phrase, turn his head. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, it is what it is. But, and then he's... Is he your type on paper? That's what you're <laughs> <laughs> But he went off the boil after that, didn't he? He did indeed, yeah. And um, it's, it's an interesting thing, really, because if I'm honest, I felt that when we were being linked with him great if we got him but it was great that we got him because it was going to weaken a promotion rival that's why i was in all honesty without meaning it sounds sneaky and underhanded that yeah, excited me more than the fact of him coming in because i couldn't see where he was going to fit into our mm. team you know when we signed all those other players that was a frantic january window for us so yeah for me yeah on paper but mm. it, it feels like a bit of an unknown quantity because you're right his season did sort of tail off but then that team's season tailed off yeah, exactly, yeah. I think what's uh, probably uh, weirdly now a good thing like Tig said about Blackburn were going for automatics with us they didn't yeah. make the playoffs mm. and that almost coincided I think Brett and Diaz got an injury to yes, be fair yeah. but it also coincided with Rothwell's health being turned and he won on it which shows how crucial Rothwell must have been to them mm. because when he was playing they were absolutely flying yeah. um, we've only seen glimpses but the glimpses are good it's probably been the main plus point of pre-season is yeah. Joe Rothwell he's, he's uh, probably be better than, than I expected him to be. I'm not sure if he's how attack minded he is as a centre midfielder. Would, could, is he able to play the two? Does he need to play in the bidding role? Number oh, I 10? think the bidding role. Well, yeah. you, I mean, based on the 90 minutes that I saw at Bristol City, I thought he played in that role and it was on that more side advanced. as well. Yeah, just slightly more advanced. He was getting in between the lines quite a lot, spreading the ball out, and he's very confident on the ball. He was one of yeah. the standout players in the first half. He tailed off a bit in the second half, but if that's what we can expect, that's great. I just wonder making that step up to the Premier League, how, how efficient he'll be. He'll but be hungry to do it. I, w- I would I have thought, so. you know, look at the size of the clubs, you know, Blackburn and Bournemouth. I mean, he obviously is doing it to try and get that Premier League. You know, he thinks, oh, I want to have a crack at the Premier League. He's been, been around the block. I think he, did he, uh, was he a youngster with Pearson at uh, Yeah, he was. Yeah, they're so, best, like, good mates, yeah. Yeah, both probably similar because Pearson was at Preston, but they both probably think with Bournemouth, we can have this crack. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a good motivator for Rothwell. And to be honest, I think that's a, Similarly with Fredericks, I think it's probably more squad depth than yeah. a guaranteed starter. But I think Rothwell was a little bit higher. Will you know he's potential if he's fit to, to maybe open the season with us. So yeah, 27. I'm kind of a little bit like, why is he not knocked on that Premier League door yet? Yeah. But equally, you know, I'm, I'm looking for. I'm a bit more intrigued to see what he's what he's about. I'm quite excited by him. He's on a four year deal. Four year deal. Nah, yeah. So okay. he signed on the south coast until 30th of June 2026. Do you think that part of the this particular signing was almost like um, trying to protect yourself in case we get relegated? Because obviously we know that he's got the quality in the championship, and he's he he's not a Premier League quality player. Well, we, we don't know that yet. 
Like he could well be, but we certainly yeah. know that he can hit the ground running in the Premier League, in the Championship. Yeah, I mean, he's not, he's, we said it, look, he's not better than what we have already. Mm. I think really, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm speaking out of turn here, but I just feel that like every signing that we make or attempt to make are, you know, good for Championship mm. without draining the bank if we yeah. get relegated. But, you know, that's just my perception of how things are going transfer-wise. At what level of Premier League club do you think that signings are being made with a consideration of a championship? Uh, do, you, do you reckon, like, yeah, how many what, teams do you reckon are doing that? You know, Fulham probably are, Forest arguably aren't. I don't think Forest are, no. I mean, Forest obviously, they, they needed to, to strengthen anyway. They lost a lot of players from the um, promotion team. They had a few loans and the goalkeeper went, etc. Um, so they were always going to do a bit. But yeah, it seems to be higher profile and more to improve the eleven rather than the mm. squad. I think... Yeah, I never felt. I always felt we had quite, we've got numbers, yeah. we've got a big squad. I didn't think we needed to strengthen the squad so much. I think we needed more to you know add quality to the eleven, and that's not what we're yeah. doing at the moment. Um, it does feel like that. That's that's my concern. Is it feels like players that if we were to go down would would give us a good chance of going back up. Makes sense, I guess, because you got to think about that to a degree. But I'd like us to have a bit more of a crack and maybe go for a little bit more quality. But you don't know. There might be a list of 100 players and we just keep missing out on them. Because mm. we're, we're, the, we're at the bottom of the pile, really, for, for Premier League players. So it's not easy. But yeah, then they're not exciting, are they, signings? Maybe it's a history thing here in that, you know, under Eddie, always comes up in our videos, isn't his name? Under Eddie, we, we never really signed players to be ready for the Championship. We always signed players that we thought yeah. we'd be able to use in the Premier League. Or we had enough value that we could sell them and make a lot of money. So... Um, this is a very different shift, isn't it, in kind of mentality? Yeah. But then we've got other things that we want to do. Or, so if, you, or if when together. you got Eddie, you got if you got players that weren't, you thought, oh, they don't improve the eleven. But that's because they're twenty years of age. Yeah, and, exactly. And long yeah. We just Ryan Fredericks and Joe Roth are twenty-seven and twenty-nine. So yeah. that's that's not long term. That's very short term. But mm. it's short term that doesn't necessarily feel like it's going to improve our eleven. So and when you add that to Suriki Dembele yeah. and Keith Moore, which are excellent players, they are excellent, excellent championship players. But you know they're untested. Well, I know Keith has played a bit, hasn't he? Yeah, he done bits and bobs, hasn't he? But yeah, yeah. It, it does feel like I think we've said that before. Uh, I said, I said it before to Tiggs that we, you know, if we were to go, I don't want to talk about it too much. But if we were to go down, you'd straight away you'd go, well, Solanke, Billin, Lerma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've Lloyd Kelly maybe. Lloyd Kelly maybe. Uh, Smith be out of contract. You're going, well, you've got Smith sorted because Fredericks is there for two years. Yeah. yeah. Um, if Solanke goes, well, that's why we bought Keith Moore because he could do it in the championship. If Lerma. And Billing go well. We've brought in Rothwell, and then maybe another player from Middlesbrough. It feels a little bit too much like that for my liking. But you know, yeah. who knows? It's just speculation at the moment. They might be brilliant, aren't they? Well, it was certainly a masterstroke because we unsettled Blackburn season. The, the fees were rumoured to be around a couple of a million at that mm. point in time, and then we got them for no cost at all. Yeah, which was superb. And he appeared in 161 matches for Blackburn, four years at the club. He was developed in Man United's academy, but. In the summer of 2018, he arrived at Blackburn Rovers, went from strength to strength, and his last campaign, that was his best yet, with 43 appearances, 38 starting, with three goals and 10 assists as well. So, not amazing in terms of the goals, but in terms of the assists, yeah. I'm sure bad. someone like Brett and Diaz must have, uh, you know, really reaped the rewards of yeah. that. Which yeah. Is, and I think we've, we've probably asked someone like that. I don't look too much at the goal. They had a goal scorer, didn't they? Mm. They, they, had a, they had a goal scorer in Brett and Diaz, so they needed him to do the them assist numbers and be creative, and he obviously was. So, yeah, I think I'm, I'm relatively excited about Brothwell. And then the latest player through the door then, Tiggs? Yeah, it's, it's very much uh, time of recording. Should have happened by now, shouldn't it? it I, haven't, be, I haven't yeah. checked my phone. Yeah, it's got to be close. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mr. Tavener. Now he, um, there's been a lot of to and throwing for him. We've, we've been in for him for mm. the whole window, really, haven't we? Yeah. Mm. Since the season ended, it seems like we were linked with him. And there's been some bidding wars as well, by the sounds of it. A couple of clubs <laughs> interested, yeah, not in I, Forest, etc. I mean, maybe. How old is Tavener? Yeah, how old is Tavener? Do you know how old Tavener's gone? Have a little quick, go on, go I'll a quick look. Because I'll have a quick. How old does he fit result, in with that guess. squad? Go on, then. go on. I'm gonna go twenty-five. Twenty-three. Okay, younger. That's good. Yeah. That is good. Like that. 1999. Wow. Wow. But yeah, he's been pitching in Bournemouth and look, he's looks yeah. like he's he's undergone his medical pending photos, etc. He will be playing in a red and black zigzaggedy shirt very, <laughs> very, very shortly. But uh, this is a player that it, you know it seems can play in, in, in not just one position. 
Yeah, he can play in like three or four, I think. So he's left footed. So, uh, but he generally likes to play in the, the centre of the, the midfield. But because he's very good on his left foot, I think he's got a bit, bit about him in terms of his pace. He's quite often pushed out to the wings. Mm. So he can play either on the wing or wing back, um, which again, kind of sort of fits with what we're kind of creating here. Would he, would he de-seat Zamora? I don't know. I don't know how good he is in that position, but... It's an option there, though, isn't it, like you say? Yeah. He's probably... Yeah, I think, like I said, I think he's probably more of like an eight uh, midfielder. It's probably where, you know, without knowing, probably where he likes playing the most. But I think there was times where in a, when four four two seemed to be more, yeah. you know, used, he was more left wing. Yeah. Um, and then I think it was, yeah, last season with Borough, because they had um, Isaiah Jones on the right, yeah. and uh, he was often the left wing back. Which, so that makes more sense to me because I think, well, we haven't got anyone really. I mean, Smith could do it, but naturally competing with Zamora, he obviously could do that, but equally he could play a, a number of positions. And, and we've seen, we've done, we've done that before. We've done that. I think Ryan Christie's got a bit of that in him. I think Robbie Brady had a bit of that in him. Where you're getting players, Ethan Laird as well, that you think, oh, they could fill a few gaps if needed. Yeah. Um, which, is, which is always handy, always helpful. And he's certainly one that seems like he's been rated highly in the Championship for a number of seasons. So and his age excites me more because yeah. I think well at that age you think there's there's a clear you know we don't know what that ceiling is yet. So um, and Middlesbrough I've had a few Middlesbrough fans on, on Twitter and stuff are definitely not happy to see him go because they're going to okay. be they they want to push That's they want to be in that top six don't they? Yeah they think they could build they, they could have built yeah. the, the team around him. One you know that that's, that's that's what they kind of regard him as and they they look at it as very much a sideways move a lot of Middlesbrough fans because they think obviously we're not going to be in their opinion hanging around the Premier League very long so he might it might come back to bite him so he's he's been given uh, a, a few unfair uh, penalties in my opinion because like you know. They've been throwing him in the camp that we did with Ryan Fraser. Yeah. The words they've been throwing around. Yeah, so I only they get got that. ten million plus for him. Yeah, it looks like cut a million bad, albums, is but it? They, they, This happens all the time, doesn't it? Like people say, but why are they doing that move to the Premier League when we we're probably one of the favourites to go up and they'll go down? But that's that's not a given. Whereas this is a given. Yeah. Yeah. Josh King left us for Watford. Yeah. yeah. Look what happened there. Yeah. He went straight back down and we've gone up. So now yeah. everyone's going. Well, you're a bit of it, but we didn't know that. No yeah. one knew that. So yeah, it. I, I get what they're saying because they're going to be going for the top, whereas we're probably going to be scrapping at the bottom. But it, it makes sense for him. He's still young and he probably, you know, again, is looking at it that, well, you know, I want, I want to have that crack. I want that guaranteed pr- crack at the Premier League. Mm. So, yeah, excited about it without thinking, will he walk into the side? Probably not. It's another side that I think he doesn't straight away improve no. us 11. You can see why Kilkenny went out on loan, though, can't you? No, Crumbs. Yeah. I mean, how many central midfielders have we got now? Yeah, yeah no, yeah. we're not in that. Which, again, I'm sure we'll allude to that system and trying to be a little bit more narrow in yeah. the pitch maybe. So what we're going to do then, we're going to take a look at the current squad as it is Tom and Tiggs and we're going to sort of try to work out who's who's going to be part of this squad now in the Premier League. I don't know. How many is it in the Premier League you got in your squad and does it count under 21s and stuff? Under 21s don't count. They, do they? don't count. Is I it 25? Yes, yeah, normally is, but I don't want to be too definite on that just because of the World Cup they've extended because okay. of the right. COVID stuff and all that and the okay. five sub rule now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might have been extended without knowing, but yes, it's around that, innit? But yeah, anyone under 20, 21, you can register for nothing anyway. So in terms of goalkeepers in and around the first team squad, we're going by the afcb.co.uk website, okay? And then any loose rumours surrounding keepers that may be training with us, etc. Yeah. So obviously we got Travers, Will Dennis, yeah. S- Smithies yeah. has been training with us, and also Jonas Lossel. In yeah. Portugal for a bit. He played in, he played in both games Portugal, didn't he? Uh, yeah. I think he played half. So I think he was the only one that let in, actually. I don't think Travis conceded in Portugal. Right. Um, but yeah, he's got a bit of experience with saying that. He, I think when Huddersfield first went up and were a revelation, really, under, mm. was it Wagner? Um, What's the usual thing, sorry? Is it three keepers in a squad, in a Premier League squad? Yeah, is, but, is that but, yeah, but then under, but under 21s, yeah. you can pick up and whoever, can't you? So okay. Quite often, the third is, is yeah. not needs to be registered anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I would have liked to have thought that the feeling would be Travers deserves the right to be the number yeah. one, obviously. Yeah. We get in someone, whether it's a, a young upcoming keeper or a real experience that's happening yeah. to be the number two, and then we send Will Dennis out on loan yeah. um, with, to make sure that if we got any injuries, we could recall him, etc. Yeah. Right now, Dennis is on the bench for the first yeah. game because the yeah. other two ain't signed, Smithies and Lossall, but they both make sense for a backup keeper. Yeah. It's gonna be, I know people would say they're not, it's going to be very difficult to get a top goalkeeper to sit on the bench. Very difficult. Woodman obviously went to Preston, yeah. so he wanted an option. Yeah. Uh, and also, and Smithies both make sense without being too exciting. But equally, I don't want someone that's going to be the number one and Travis sit on the bench. He had an unbelievable yeah, season. Yeah. And there's no point in getting a loan in because who wants to loan a player to us if they're going to sit on our bench? You know, that's what's happened with goalkeepers in the past. And that's so why Woodman didn't come back. Exactly. 
I'm really pleased for, for Travs, really, because I think you know, a year ago it looked like Parker was trying to line someone else up because he maybe didn't know mm. Travs that well, didn't think he'd you know, be able to do it. Uh, and then in January, we're still we're looking at trying to get somebody in, and now it looks like he's grabbed it with both hands and it's his. I, I can't see um, anyone else kind of stepping into that. Mm. And well deserved, like he's been brilliant. And he does have Premier League experience. Mm. Yeah, he does, he does, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, no, I, I think ideally, I would probably like a, an experienced goalkeeper that's happy to be the number two and kind of really improve Travs. Well, like yeah. a Ben Foster or something. Like a Ben Foster of the Foss card, of the Foss cast. And um, cycling GK, I yeah. bet. But um, yeah, that sort of kid, I think, I remember when Ramsdale, you've got to remember when Ramsdale had that first season for us, yeah. and it was in the Premier League, we'd never seen him. Mm. He'd been out at Wimbledon, but Boric was sat there. Mm. And I, I always like that, because you think worst case scenario, you're gonna, Boric's gonna come in, not let you yeah. down. So Smithy's training with us, he's in his 30s, I believe, mm. makes sense. Got a little bit of experience in the Premier League and a lot in the Championship. So that would make sense. I'd be happy with, with Smithy's or if they went for Lossell, to be honest. Um, yeah, Eva would be happy, which I'd, you just have to trust the goalkeeping department and the staff and Scott that they know they know which one in and around the group and will be helpful if we needed them. But hopefully, no injury to Travs and he has another good season. So it's fair to say there's, there is work to do in the goalkeeping department yeah. in terms of trying to get someone in. You've got to okay. get somebody in, yeah. Work to do, lads. Right, okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to split the rest of the side up. Uh, right wing back, centre backs, left wing back, centre midfielders, attacking midfielders, and then your forwards. So yep. on okay. the right side, the voted one of the sexiest players in the league or something. The, 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 he the won the. Premier Leagues, yeah. I mean, nothing against you, Jack. I think, we think you're a melt, an absolute delight. Mm. Dreamboat, but what? What? Apparently, it's to do with face symmetry. We'll have to do a video on it. He has got a symmetrical <laughs> face, to be fair. Uh, Amy Marcondes must be rattled. How has he not won that? Just imagine yeah. Stacey, like Jack Stacey, going on, like on Love Island, and you know the girls on there, like you know, you've you've got such a symmetrical face. Yeah, I can draw a line down it. It's brilliant. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the amount he keeps seeing more right backs coming into the club, he might fancy going to the Villa. To be honest. Um, <laughs> He really doesn't seem to have the trust of Parker, in my opinion. But he's obviously one of the right wing back options, along with Adam Smith and Ryan Fredericks, who we brought in. So we seem quite strong there. Yeah, we do seem quite strong there. But all very different sort of play. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I we can't do it out of Fredericks that well. No. But you know, Smith's going to cut inside. He's yeah. going to hold the ball up a little bit. He's going to yeah. really bad. Stacey, whew, you know, he's just going to whip down that line, isn't he? Mm. Um, Fredericks. Apparently, Fredericks is like extremely fast. Yeah, like ridiculously, so. you know. I, I made that sort of um, comparison with um, Adam Smith and Jack Stacey being like two chess pieces. So, like, you know, Jack Stacey is just the one that Josh is yeah. like, you know, like in line. He's a rook. Is that a rook? Where, whereas Adam Smith is like the queen, he can go anywhere. Yeah, or well, the bishop. I'm sure Adam Smith's watching this thinking, thanks for calling me a queen, mate. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> So that's the right side, and that you know that's one of Ryan Fredericks' role, and I'm sure we'll we'll pick up on other places that he could be yeah. on the pitch. But so centre backs, Chris Meppham, Lloyd yeah. Kelly, yeah, Tom Jordan, Sam <laughs> Davis, <laughs> James Hill. Yeah. Then yeah. you've got Adam Smith that could fill in as right centre back if needed, in as he's done yeah. in a couple of friendlies so far. But also Jefferson Lerma, who's come back a few times. Yeah. Which is what I don't want because we no. know that he's he's one of our strongest midfielders. To put you know to bring him back there would seriously weaken our midfield. But I'm hoping that's just a stopgap. But why would you do it for friendlies? Well, we ain't got just practice just in well, case. If you're going to play that that sort of thing, and when he's played it in the past, he certainly the central one of the three that he's playing in the centre back needs to be able to play with the ball. They he's need to be able to come out, out yeah. you know, pass. So I think that's probably why he's, he's practicing Lerma there because at the yeah. minute. You haven't got any other options. No, I agree. And I think you look at, I'm trying to think of kind of, to obviously a lot play with that back three now. I think a, a one that a lot of people would know would be like England, for example, play that back three. John Stone is off, off, often in that centre because he's very comfortable coming yeah. out of the ball. Um, you know, so maybe that's why they've, they've used Lerma in there. And don't get me wrong, Lerma would do a job in there. Lerma's a, an experienced player and he is decent on the ball, but I think you, you lose Lerma's greatest qualities putting him in there. Um, and I wouldn't... I mean, he'd probably do a job. You forget how much experience he's got. But Adam Smith, right centre back. Are you? If if that's happening, I'm the opposition manager. I'm, we saw it at West Brom, didn't we? Yeah. You, you get your big man. You, you just you yeah. target yourself on on Smithy there. But um, I'm hoping this is because I mean we're gonna get centre backs. Well, I tell you yeah. what, Colombia aren't gonna play Jeff and Salerno at centre back, no. are they? I mean, that's a. Is it, is it worth saying that 
The transfer window, of course, doesn't shut on August the 7th. And we have got a start of the season, apart from, say, Aston Villa at home, which is horrible. Really you could almost write those games off. So maybe he's just, it's almost a case of damage limitation for the first three, four games. And then maybe there'll be some activity then who can bed in to the right position and put Jefferson Lerma back where he should be. I don't know. Potentially. Um, you, you don't know what's happening, whether we've tried to get players in it's just kind of fell through and I, I would have yeah. thought they would have hoped to have got a centre half in by now um, I, I I think ideally every manager really I think if you were to ask them would rather get all the players they wanted before kind of you go on your, your trip to Portugal or whatever mm. to get them all bedded in with the group we know Tig said it off air Scott Parker's known Yeah. Um, I know just just from Bournemouth he's, I mean, he gets everyone late doesn't he I mean he come into the club quite late and then I think Christy Lowe Kale all come in late um, deadline day in January was mad. He didn't really bring mm. in many before that. And then Tiggs said to me earlier that he'd done very similar at Fulham. So for Fulham, yeah. So maybe that is a thing. Maybe it's a bargaining tool as well. You know, if, if Liverpool go and you can have Nat Phillips, 15 million, and Parker might be saying to the board, he ain't going to go anywhere else. Just we get him for eight in the last day. Yeah, yeah, just leave it. And, you know, that would make sense as well. But my concern right now is natural centre halves, Lloyd Kelly, happy days, captain of the club. Chris Meppen, well, he was struggling to get on the bench last season mm. yeah. in the Championship. James Hill had played one minute of Championship football, mm. zero Premier League and a few League One. <laughs> Are we uh, just starting? But right now, he's starting the Premier League. Are we just starting this season like we started last? Are we Are we just going to be sort of riding the storm for the first... I mean, it went well. Last well, we it did lose went well, one. yeah, and we, get, and we got promoted. Not saying Champions League's going to happen this time round, but... There is a distinct difference, though, in that we had a crop of youngsters and... Un, pretty much untested, but very highly thought of, yeah. that were ready to make a step. Now, whether that was a step with us or whether it was a step out on loan mm. somewhere, we had a group of them. Whereas now we've got a great use set up, don't get me wrong, but there aren't many of those players who are knocking on the door for a mm. Premier League space. When you think about your, your squad that you're yeah. going to register for the Premier League, there aren't many that, you know, that are training with the first team. And there's a big difference from going to Birmingham on the yeah. second, third game and going to the Etihad. Yeah. I, I feel like there's a difference between Scott Hogan and Erden Haaland is what I'm saying so but yeah listen yeah. right now if we start tomorrow I think you're going Hill, Kelly and Meppen which yeah. are back three which is not ideal but I, I, I mean I'm convinced we're going to and you don't change that sister to a three at the back if you know full well you ain't getting so he's getting at least one I would have liked to have fought two set off alright on the left wing back position then uh, Jay-Z yeah um, Tavernier Ad, hopefully ta yeah Tavernier and Adam Smith who can play on that side yeah we'll we'll probably get another one I would hope we get somebody in work but I think yeah I think work to do as a natural that's their position because Tavernier yeah he can play there we know that we've been told that we've seen a little bit of it but that's not his it's not the position it's not his bread and butter it's not what he plays week in week out necessarily Adam Smith yeah he's done a job for us there but he's never going to do what no. Jordan Zamora tries to do so I suppose it's all about what Parker wants but if he wants someone who can step in for Jordan Zamora yeah. which I presume that's the order of things that, that Jay-Z comes first then he needs someone who can actually has that those attributes those skills yeah. I'm not convinced you'll see a, a left wing back come in yeah. um, I agree um, but I think the, the sign of Fredericks as well was also with the thought of Moving Smith over. can move over and we've got mm. two options there with Stacey and Fredericks and I think he's got Tavernier can do it if I need to um, and yeah things like that so I, I even think with this system he might even go if I have to for a game Anthony could do it mm. kind of that wing back yeah, role yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, don't yeah. think we're going to certainly wouldn't splash cut I think if a loan option becomes available potentially and I think last season showed that when we knew about Zamora going to the African Cup we went oh Brady could do it if we needed him to yeah. so maybe there might be a stop gap there but I, I personally don't think that's going to be priority it will just be if something becomes available loan option alright so centre midfield then we've got Lewis Cook Jefferson Lerma, Ben Pearson, of course the incoming Tavernier. I suppose a mention to Mariah Welsh, although he's not actually listed on AFCB.co.uk, but we know he's, he's there and thereabouts, but probably not going to be no. uh, involved. You know, a lot of people say that we've got uh, a wealth of midfielders. Mm. It seems to be a wealth of attacking midfielders. Yeah, I think the ones you alluded to, is, uh, you're right, they're, they're the kind of central midfielders, kind of the deep line players. Obviously, people would say, well, if we had to, Mark Condes could do it, Rothwell might be able to do it, yeah. Billy might Billing. be able to do yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Um, even Stanislas might be able to do it. And, you know, there's certain players that can maybe do that role. But I think, obviously, we're going to natural positions. The one you'd like a bit deeper would be your, your Lermas, your Pearsons and, and your Lewis Cooks, probably. I think we're going to hope for Lewis Cook. I think this is a, yeah. could be a massive season for him. Huge. I think he's 
you know, he's someone that the ceiling was so high and the injuries yeah. have really caught up with him. But we saw last season how crucial he could be. And obviously, I, we'd like to think whether it just be Lewis sat in front of a back three or a double pivot. I think most people would say ideally it would be Lewis and, and Lerma. I think with Rothwell signing and Tavernera could do it if needs be. Certainly not a position I'd expect any more strength in. No. And we've even allowed Kilkenny to go out on loan. And I'm actually really happy with that because I think Kilkenny's been almost too good to go out on loan. Agreed. But not good enough to quite break in, which is, must be hard for him. Yeah. And I think going to Stoke, where they built a team around Joe Allen, who's left. Perfect. I think they'll do the same with Kilkenny. I think, I think he could be a shining light. And yeah. I think we're in a no-brainer there because we either have him back or we're going to say you're going to have to spend a lot of money to have him so yeah. like if you want to sign him so ideal so I thought that's a position I think we're probably strong in the, the one interesting one there is Ben Pearson for me because he didn't really mm. get a good shot last season he didn't really get many chances he really needs to take this chance mm. but he is different to the others in that you know his, his range of passing is not quite the same and he doesn't move forward quite the same as the other two will naturally do so yeah he's gonna to have to really kind of uh, I don't know really stamp his authority on, on the game, really, if he's going to get a chance. Otherwise, yeah, I think, I think he'll be gone. Yeah, I think the only thing you say, like Pearson and Kilkenny, obviously Kilkenny got probably more minutes. Like, yeah. Actually, yeah. Last, but Kilkenny, you'd say, what's he good at? On the ball. Yeah. What's Pearson good at? Off the ball. Yeah. Championship, you're going to be on the ball. Mm. Premier League, you're probably going to be off the yeah, ball more. Point. So, okay. so yeah. I kind of, I, yeah. I did always feel like sure. that Pearson, weirdly, might get more minutes in the Premier League. I yeah. don't think he's going to randomly start games. Right. But also with this system where Lerma can move back, Pearson yeah. can then do the Lerma role. Yeah. It's a weird one, but I think Ben Pearson is suited to a, a, a team that are scrapping mm. rather than a team that mm -hmm. want to dictate the play. Remains to be seen, but I'm, I'm glad Pearson's still in the mix. And mm. I, I think he, he could be, you know, I think he could play a part. And then our attacking midfield, Phil Billing, Junior Stanislas when he's fit, of course, Emiliano Marcondes, David Brooks, whenever he'll be back, Ryan Christie, Joe Rothwell. Uh, that seems to be all right, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, like you say, they're all players. They all seem quite versatile players, I would say as well. Yeah. Um, so players that can that can Pre move around. Premier League experience there with Phil, Bill, Stanislas, and David Brooks, of course. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they've all got Premier League experience, which is, which is, which is key. I think. Yeah, like I said, I think there's a lot of versatility in there. A lot of them can drop deeper. A lot of them can move to wide positions if needs be. Yeah. They can all kind of be quite flexible amongst each other and all rotate. You know, you can go, Bill and Rothwell can kind of change roles and Chris can come inside and go out. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of options there. And yeah, I don't think that's a that's a role that we really need to, to look at too much. I quite like it. I mean, Phil Bill kind of sticks out like a sore thumb really for yeah. me in terms, of, in terms of his quality when he's really on it. Um, Plus he's really tall. Plus he's really <laughs> tall. Yeah, uh, Junior, uh, you know, he's, we know he's had injury problems. When he's fit, he's incredible. He is incredible. Probably one of the best players we've ever had. Marcondes doesn't really get a fair crack of the whip, if you ask me, because when he comes in, he always does really well, and then he seems to be dropped. Brooksy, obviously, we know, you know, in terms of what's been going on with him last year, and he needs, he's got a way to get fit. Of course. Um, some people are saying whether he's targeting, you know, potentially a World Cup call up or not, I don't know. And then Christie and Rothwell, relatively new, aren't they, both of them? Um, but the, the thing is with those, apart from Phil Bill, Goals has been a is an issue. Problem, yeah. yeah, I'd agree with that. I think, um, like Tiggs was saying, Stanislas, we all know what he can do, but injuries, we all know what Brooks he can do, but obviously the situation with him. So then you go and Rothwell's still very un unknown. Obviously he's a new signing for us, but you went to the stats there and assists were good. Goals not so much. Ryan Christie, what I think was a revelation. He was brilliant and particularly off the ball. Did he get many assists and goals? No. no. Um, when Billing was in the Premier League before, did he get many goals? No. He, he had a good season last season, and no. to be fair to him. When he was in the Premier League, he was playing a lot deeper. So yeah. he will be playing a lot higher up. Mark Condes, I don't see getting enough minutes. So that's the only worry. I think when we went up before, I was thinking about this the other day, and when we went up before, obviously we had Callum Wilson and uh, we had Dom Solanke then kind of, you can go, yeah, yeah, that's one for one. But we also had Jan Kermigan, Brett Pittman, obviously he didn't actually stay with us. Um, Harry Arter, I think, got nine. Mm. Pugh and Richie got double figures. Yeah. You know, and there was, was goals everywhere. There was there? goals yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And... and not so much so maybe we might try and bring someone in that can that can add to that but yeah I think it would be really interesting to see what Billing could do in that advanced role in the Premier League because I know a lot of people say when he's been in the Premier League he didn't really cut it but he's yeah. playing deeper so let's see but I, cause Billing has got the quality he has got the quality In terms of Emilio Arno Marcondes why, why do you think Brentford got rid of him and we haven't? Yeah it's weird isn't it? It is interesting isn't it? I think He was out of contract He was out of contract there yeah and yeah. They, maybe they were kind of re- reshuffling the squad around in terms of what they thought they'd need for Premier League football yeah. because we know that you know he's 
when he came to us, we were excited because he's he's done it in the championship. Because there's always players that dropped it. I think it was Benjamin Bloom on our transfer deadline day show. Yeah. And I think he was getting into a debate with Neil Dawson. Yeah. And he asked him, you know, there's always this for, for teams that get promoted for the yeah. championship. Which players are going to you know, drop down a division yeah. when you get promoted to the Premier League? And yeah. I did think that he could be one of them, but, it, yeah. you know, just the way it shapes. Well, he could still be. be well, he could yeah, still be. True. I mean, look, you know, we've got, we've got a, a really hard August a really hard August, you know, and beginning of September. And that may well shape very, you know, obviously what the squad t- is going to be, what the team is going to be going forward until they need to make their decisions on uh, transfer deadline day when they actually submit the squad. So it could well be that if he doesn't get minutes in that time, he might want to, you know, want to hang about. You yeah, know? I, think he'll, I think he'll be gone in January personally, whether it be a loan or, or departure permanently. I de- just don't see him getting the minutes. I don't think he got enough for what he potentially warranted in the, yeah. in the championship but this has happened before and he's his stats were probably good they yeah, were great yeah, 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 you look at were. in terms of goals yeah, and assists and just, and and just changing yeah. games to be honest yeah. with you but yeah. I think and we could probably say the same about Jamal Lowe we'll come on to but I think with I, I'm so I reckon he's not been made available because if he was if you're a championship club I've said this on previous shows he was at Brentford they got promoted he went to Bournemouth they got promoted if you're a championship club you're going mm. he's been there a day be great for the dress I always remember Tommy Elphick going to, to Villa. As soon as Di Matteo yeah. went there, he thought, God, this guy knows how to get promoted. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's key. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if in January he went to a team that were kind of knocking on that promotion door and they thought, oh, yeah. we'll get him to the end of the season. It'll be good experience and backs up with numbers with goals and assists. But mm. don't see him getting enough enough minutes, mate. But I don't think we'll necessarily strengthen in that area. But there's certainly other areas, as we've alluded to, that will we'll, we'll yeah, need more. more yeah. yeah, and forwards then. So Dom Solanke, Jamal Lowe, Kiefer Moore, Jaden Anthony, Sariki Dembele, and then Christian Sadie. Obviously, he was out on loan. He's, he's listed on the acb.co.uk website. <laughs> Happy with that? Strengthen? Or well, look, I mean, look, we, our system is going to be pretty much, you know, Dom ups up that, front, yeah. that? and then either two behind him or two out wide of him yeah. now the the problem with that is and i think these players you know great players but um none of them are dom solanke mm. so when you take dom solanke and this is the conversation we were having constantly last year you take dom solanke out of that team you haven't got a light for light dom solanke to plug back in mm. so you have to change the way that you then play and i think that's what we've got in our in our forwards we've got very different types mm. of players who all do different types of jobs, which is great to have the versatility, but in terms of a squad, would that become a problem maybe? Mm. Potentially. I think Dom's obviously the main man. Yeah. Um, but what you know, to caveat, I think if you said, well, we need someone to compete with Dom, you go, you are not getting anyone better than Keith Moore that's happy to sit on the bench. True. Dom's, I think, oh, obviously a lot different level, but I think Tottenham have always struggled with it. Like they've always had Kane, yeah. and then when he's out, they just put Son up front yeah. because they yeah. go, because who the hell is going to go there? Because they know they're sat on the bench. Yeah. And, every, and a striker that we could attract would know they'll be second fiddle. And I think yeah. you're not going to get a better second fiddle than Kiefer Moore and a good plan B option as well. Yeah. With yeah. His, with you know his height and his, his physicality as we saw in, in plenty of games at the back end of last season. I think ideally, if I was being, um, yeah, if I, if I really wanted to you know, kind of get anyone we wanted, I'd, I'd like another wide option. Yeah. But we don't look like we're maybe going to play like that. Yeah. I just think, as we kind of said when we were talking about the attacking midfielders, Christy, Anthony, Dembele, is there many goals? I mean, that's three wingers there that mm. I don't see many goals in the Premier League. So Anthony might provide. Maybe, but it's a big step up for him yeah, to play in the Premier League. So I think, yeah, I think maybe a, a, a winger that could provide goals. Could low do it? Potentially, he done that in the Championship, but it's a big step up from him. He's another one of that Marcondes mould that I think yeah. he got the January and he barely had any minutes. He might want to drop down the Championship, mm. but there's a few things we need to do and there's a few things I definitely think we will do, mate. Where do you think we need to strengthen? Let us know. Who would you like to sign? Are there any are there any players on your radar? I'm sure you do a lot of FPL and all that kind of stuff, so you know it you better than I do, better than we do. Maybe not better than Tom. Put it in the comments below, we'd love to know. That's the lowdown of where we're at at the moment, between now and the start of the season. If there is any movement, don't you worry. We'll have it covered here on Back of the Net. Make sure you follow us on social media, by the way. Our Twitter went over 4,000. That's yeah, nice. That's, that's nice. nice. We're a little dinky club like us. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for everyone who's following us. If you're not, it's at AFCB Podcast. And that's the handle for all our socials as well, including Instagram, Facebook and all that jazz. Lads, it's been a pleasure. 
Oh, thank you, mate. No, I've enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it, mate. Bring on the new season. Bring on the new season. Look, we're going to have some coverage of Real Sociedad over the weekend and maybe a bit from the CBS fight at the BIC on Saturday night. Good luck, Billum Smith. Fingers crossed you'll do, you'll do a number on him. And then, yeah, early next week as well, we'll have another video which talks about the different things that Premier League sides need to be aware of when they watch AFC Bournemouth next season. What are we telling them for? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Scrap that. Should we do, should we do a vlog somewhere? <laughs> Why, yeah, not? Why not? Go and watch Brock and Earth. <laughs> Other cherries. We'll see you in the next video. Up, Chaz. Up, Chaz. Up, Chaz. Up, Chaz.